Welcome in to our <laughs> overtime segment here at SportsSource.tv. Wish you could have heard what I said just before we started. <laughs> uh, this segment brought to you by our friends at Smoke and Joe's and Blue Smoke Cigar. Now, I've told you about Smoke and Joe's for years. They got a great location down in Alcoa. Blue Smoke Cigar is their latest venture. I just like saying venture. It's their latest venture. It's out in top. West Knoxville next to Rafferty's or across. Is it Rafferty's or Rafferty's or like Rafferty's? Bill Rafferty's. 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 Yeah. Rafferty's. Like Bill Rafferty. Yeah. It's got the uh, it's South Peters Road there. It's in between the two. And this is a an all-inclusive club. It's a lounge. So you can still go in there to the Walker and Humidor, buy, buy a cigar, still watch some television in there. But if you're a member, ooh, if you're a member, you get the leather seating inside. <laughs> you get all the wall of televisions. You get the, uh, the, the card tables. You get the golf game that they've got in there. Good stuff. Blue Smoke Cigar. Check it out for yourself. Yeah. Don't, don't take my word for it. Just go in there and look for yourself. You'll be impressed. Nothing like it in Knoxville. Nothing like it in Knoxville. All right. Uh, welcome in the panelists for today. We have down there, we'll start this one and work back. Chuck Cavallaris, good yes. to have you here. Josh Ward, of course, does radio from noon to three on WNML, uh, Sports Radio WNML, 991, 99.3. Are you still 99.3? No three, just 991 uh, 990. AM 990. Okay. And Mark Pankratz, of course, uh, you appear on Sports Anim on sports Radio WNML as well. <laughs> sports Animal. Uh, why did they ever change it? It messed me up. Uh, of course, you played Division One basketball under Bruce Pearl. You were on the staff of Bruce Pearl, on the staff of Conzo Martin here at Tennessee. Before we get started into this, I do want to make a comment that I thought was very nice. And I can do this online. I, you know, it's, there's, there's lines you don't cross on television, I guess. Uh, but Brittany Nauta, who started with us here at, at the Sports Source, she's now uh, another station in town. She sent me a note uh, during the show, actually. She said, I forgot to mention this to you. Uh, and I didn't want to forget it again. Met a really sweet couple who has watched you every week for years. They lost everything in Gatlinburg. Uh, they found me on the street to make sure you know they love the show. Wow. Well, that's... That is really moving, and if anybody knows who those folks are, I'd love to get their names. Um, so, anyway, thanks. So many people watch this show, and I think they watch it not, not for us. I think they, they watch just because it's, it's honest. I mean, we're not going to sit here and ramp up fake arguments and that kind of thing, and I think, it's, uh, I think people appreciate that, that it's not just... It's not just beating one statement. You know, we don't just pick one side and hammer it home, which a lot of people do, because you get more, you get more hype that way if you're always negative or always positive. But I think if you're always in the middle and just say what you think, people tend to watch. And I appreciate the folks. We get all kinds of comments from people who watch. People come up to me and say, "I've watched forever." And we appreciate it. And for the folks in Gatlinburg, who we've said many times, our thoughts with them, certainly our thoughts with this couple that have watched us, but they're with everybody up there. It's going to be a rough holiday season, but it's great to see how much East Tennessee and the nation has come together and uh, donated and worked to help Sevier County. Uh, all right, let's, let's get on to sports here. I want to quickly look ahead to 2017 and talk rosters. No, we don't have to get in depth huge, but we'll let Chuck down there talk a little football with Josh in the middle. We'll let Mark here talk a little basketball with Josh. So that's what we'll do. We'll let football discussion, basketball discussion, and then I'll decide which of you guys are correct. Right? <laughs> uh, what I want to know is which program is closer to a 2017 championship. There's a lot of fretting over Tennessee's recruiting in basketball. You wonder, okay, so Robert Hubbs goes away. What are, you're losing guys this year. What have you got coming back for 2017? In football, you're losing a lot of talent in football, but you've got some coming back. Uh, let's say overall SEC, because there is no East in basketball. Okay. Which program is closer to winning a championship, football or basketball? And I'll start over here talking with the basketball roster. Um, what do you think it looks like moving forward? And then, Josh, how close do you think they are to a championship? Then we'll do the same thing with football. Uh, I think roster-wise, uh, if you're looking at it next year, uh, we're not close. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with some of the competition with, I think just Kentucky and some of those are, are very good for next year. But if you move beyond that and you've got look at this roster filled with, I think it's eight or nine freshmen and sophomores, and you can fast forward to 2018, and then you look at the, the weakness that SEC basketball has been, um, I think that, that the basketball program is in a great position uh, to get there um, maybe sooner than football. Okay, all right. My, uh, Josh, your thoughts on just the overall basketball roster and how close it is to a championship for next year? Yeah, I would think basketball is a year away from, from saying 
maybe we're a year away from having this conversation. <laughs> a year away from saying a year away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I think that could be the case. Last week, Shimbari Phillips, who's a sophomore guard, he was talking about some of the freshmen. He said, think about it. These guys have four years to go, counting the season, obviously. And if you think about two years down the line when Grant Williams and John Fulkerson are juniors and they've had experience guarding, defending in the post, they've developed. And then those guards, Bowden and, and Bone there uh, in the backcourt, all of that develops over a couple of years and maybe you add more talent to help them. That's when I think you start to have that championship conversation. All right, I, uh, I will say, oh, go ahead. Well, no, I'm good. No, I was just gonna say one thing that I think you have to keep in mind is basketball more so than football. And it happens in football too, you coach guys up. But I think in basketball you see it more often. Um, you can look at the roster and go, meh, but that's not how they play on the court. And I will say this team has played better than I expected it to play on the court. We asked that question last week on the show, and I think everybody on the table said, yes, this team has raised expectations. So if you're sitting there saying, well, look at this roster, okay, I'm not going to put it beyond Rick Barnes, who's a Hall of Fame coach, to get more out of the roster than I may see on a recruiting ranking when they sign. Outside of Kentucky and Florida, when you watch basketball over a weekend, I mean, you watch the South Carolinas, who's doing really well, but they're going to lose a lot. But then you watch the, the, the Missouris, the Ole Miss, the Mississippi, all these other, it's not exciting. There, there's no future that you're like, all right, these guys are going to, they're young and they're going right. to build and be really good. But you watch Tennessee and you look at that roster and the way they continue to improve, there's excitement around that. And, and that, that's where the future, I think, is bright. Well, it's one reason somebody said, why, why do people watch last year? And just to tell you how many of you thank goodness for you, watch year round people there's still people who say well you're just football right it's like no 15 years still <laughs> still every rank year round <laughs> uh, and and people think well it's just football our highest rated month last year was february february was our highest rated month before this past year past football season the previous 12 months uh, the uh, the reason for that i think is people love their basketball first of all i mean even though attendance has been down when you're not winning you still rank in the top 15 nationally. <laughs> there are a lot of schools that would kill for the kind of support you got for a losing basketball team last year. But I think the, the other reason, if somebody said, why are people going to watch this, this winter for basketball? It's going to be another so-so year at best. I think because you've got so many guys that you can now say, he's going to be here for three years. That guy's going to be here for four years. It's been a while because you've, you've gone through coaches who had to well, you had so many coaching changes. You didn't have people, you didn't have coaches here for four years. Conzo didn't last four years. Um, you know, Tyndall was getting rental players because people left. He brought in his own guys. It was, and I don't mean they paid them. I mean, you know, grad transfers and guys that came in for a year, a cup of coffee. Uh, Rick Barnes had some of those guys last year. Now you're getting guys that you can actually lay a foundation with that I think fans can actually relate to a little bit more. You got three of your own. Fulkerson's a Tennessee kid. Yeah. Bowden's a Tennessee kid. Jordan local Bone, kid, a Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're all kid. Tennessee kids. Or not all, but there's a good amount of them. All right. On to football. Chuck Cavallaris, you're losing a quarterback who I think people are going to miss once he's gone, but there's talk of Jared Garantano. No, look, he may, he may go out there and not look good in his first game if, if he wins it and it goes to Quentin Normandy. We don't know. But from everybody I talked to over there, Garantano has wowed people. They think real deal. So you may have a transcendent quarterback who knows how he plays as a freshman, but running back, you got a John Kelly who's good. Don't have a lot behind him though. Uh, you've got questions around a lot. Shy Tuttle, who you've been counting on now, that injury looks bad, like he's gonna miss part of next year. Uh, like it could be worse than the last injury he had. So look at the roster. How close is Tennessee to a championship on the football side in your view? Well, I, I think it helps being in the East. I think it helps being in the East because that's the first hill you have to climb. I, I still think that it would be hard for me to see Tennessee doing a whole lot better next season than it did this season. And there's just going to have to be a lot of improvement in some key position groups for them to take that step. All right. Josh, your thoughts on Tennessee's football roster and how close it might be to a championship? Uh, I agree with everything that Chuck just said. Uh, being in the East helps because you're trying to, I guess, still beat out Florida in the East. You beat Florida on the field, beat Georgia on the field, but you're trying yeah. to beat them out in the division. Uh, you do have an offensive line that brings back almost everybody. Now, it needs to be a lot better, yeah. but the first thing you have to have is the players, and they do have personnel to work with. You're adding Trey Smith in the spring, uh, and he's a freshman, but Alabama won a national title last year with the 
uh, a freshman at, at left tackle a couple, a couple years ago was playing for one. So uh, th there's a lot of work to be done. The defensive line would be my biggest concern. You're replacing a quarterback. That's obviously uh, scary anytime, even if you have a very talented player like Jarrett Garantano. The fact that Alabama is there would be the, the yeah. biggest reservation. Kentucky and basketball. It, it, yeah, it's, it's very similar to Kentucky and basketball as well. You have a monster there at the top that you're trying to beat out, and it it seems unrealistic. If if I had to guess, I would predict that next season is similar to this year. But I would say if we're comparing the two sports, football is closer right now than than basketball. Okay. Okay. My, my biggest concern. Than basketball. What do you think? What's that? Football closer than basketball, or the other way around? I think football is closer, but we're going to see more improvement in basketball. And I, the reason I would almost always pick basketball is because it takes one player in basketball to have an incredibly, make an incredible impact, difference yeah. and impact than that roster full of football. You get that one and done guy, that guy that blows up like a Josh Richardson who you don't expect to be as good, he can win you a bunch of basketball games. Good point. Do you think, but do you think basketball could be closer than football? Well, not could for be. not next who do you year. Think? For next, next year, year football is closer. Next year, I would think football is okay. is closer. I agree. I also would say though that. As I said earlier, <laughs> obviously I would say this because I've said it twice now. <laughs> I don't want to underestimate Rick Barnes. We'll see about the recruiting stuff. Still a question mark out there on the recruiting front. But in terms of his on-court coaching, I'm not going to write off this roster because I look at the roster and go, meh. Because I think he may be able to bring something more out of a roster than what you just see on paper. The competition in basketball is, is less scary, right? Yes. Compared to absolutely. football. Very much so. Very much so. Okay. Guys, I appreciate it. Chuck, Josh, Mark, uh, thanks to them. Thanks to you. Thanks to all of our sponsors, including Blue Smoke Cigar <laughs> and Smoke and Joe's. Join us next Sunday, 11 a.m., December 18th. It is our 14th annual holiday extravaganza. We put a lot of work into that show. It's really <laughs> stupid. And, I, it's, and it usually turns out to be quite mean. So, uh, and I don't know if that has anything to do with the eggnog we drink on set or not. <laughs> but join us next Sunday for our Christmas, well, I'm sorry, our holiday extravaganza. Christmas, Hanukkah, Festivus. whatever you want to make it. Festivus, Festivus for the rest of us. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you.